It is the Cat Nat Parenting Unfiltered podcast. Welcome. This is all about your tweens and teens. And we started this really truly because honestly, uh, the teen space is unable to keep up with how fast the teens are changing the game. We have no history to pull on. So we are basically doing this podcast in real time because even the researchers are pulling from their practices. So the teens are coming in and they're having these issues and then the researchers or the therapists are having to react and be like, okay, this is the problem. And that's how they're dealing with sort of um, what's going on more globally is by looking at the communities and how many times they're seeing the same problem over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And, and we know that like there are just every, every kid is different, but there are, um, there are issues that come up and as, and we will try and cover in this podcast and in the Calm Parent as much as we possibly can. If there's topics that you guys are 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 wanting us to talk about, then we will definitely always, always try and tackle that and find the right expert who can give us um, what we need to know about it, how to handle it, and um, how to, uh, if not find a solution, at least know how to handle solutions does anyone have a solution you know what i mean Mm, no i don't have a solution but um in this upcoming podcast we were lucky enough to speak with um, mandy giles and she is um she is teaching us how to support trans kids and that it's so important um to discuss how to support trans kids because we know there are trans kids but we sometimes we don't know as a parent how to tackle that and handle that or how to react to that or if it's um another uh like a, uh, your your kid's friend or even just anyone you know someone in your family someone you're coming across how to properly or your friend's child that you might not come across but how you can speak with them or if they are dealing with a situation i was talking to someone recently and they were saying how so many people in different circles it takes one person to open up for someone else to be like Oh, well, this is my story mm-hmm. too, and I think so often it we like to walk with like um a like an armor and pretend that everything's okay. Either because we're too tired to talk about it, we don't really know how to explain it because it's so much. Like if you have a teen who's maybe going through different things and they are different, or they are transitioning, or they are curious about you know being a different gender, or you've noticed something from when they were a younger age, or they look different, and you don't know how to explain it to their grandparents mm-hmm. or to you know, your own, your own, um, your own family. And I think learning about it doesn't harm anybody. If anything, it helps more people because I will say this forever in a day that no child, no person, no anybody wishes to be different Mm -mm. because being different is so much harder than being quote unquote, like mainstream. Cause when you're mainstream, you don't just get beat up for being different. You have more opportunities. It's easier. You find your friend group easier. And I mean, I've watched it firsthand over and over and over again um, where the non-mainstream people are desperate to just have a community where they fit in and where they can feel like they belong because when you are quote unquote different than the mainstream, it it is an overwhelming, even when you don't look like your family and you're sitting there and I'm like, I'm different than all of you and, and you're not supported and you want to ignore it. You don't understand. And less than half of trans kids feel like they have an adult that they can actually go and talk to. And if like, I mean, right now you might be sitting there and you're, you're not facing any of this, but if your child was going through anything, I, we would hope and we would feel we would want to be the ones that they can come and talk to because also if they do feel like they have a family that's supportive then their um their thoughts of depression and suicide go way down yeah because they're not living with a secret that they feel like the people who love them they can't trust to tell them it's so interesting because i think there used to be so many arguments with people over you know when when teenagers begin to or even younger kids, they begin to want to do something different, get an ear piercing, get their nail polished on, um, even girls or boys, or dye their hair, shave their heads, grow their hair, you know, kind of um, pushing the gender norms, dyeing their hair purple, dyeing their hair green, Mm -hmm. um, wearing clothes, you know, and maybe tattoos or wearing things that you're like, that is not Mm -hmm. a representation that I want my child Mm -hmm. to look like. Mm -hmm. Even if you even think of that minuscule thing, that people get in wars over Mm -hmm. about dyeing their hair a different color. What that would look like to be a different, 
identify as a different gender. And so I think sometimes, and I'm not saying this for all children, they will push the boundaries to see how you're going to react. So if they're going to change something or be a bit different, are you going to flip your lid because they look a bit different? And they might not even be aware that they're feeling something different because if you don't talk about it and it's not in the schools, you really just feel like you're so from a different world that no one will understand you. Um, I think that it is a really so um it's so interesting how you respond and if you think they're going to come to you if you lose your mind over like a boy getting a nail polish or you're getting your hair done there's not a chance they're coming to you with you with anything no. big they're not coming to you no they can't trust you and they're afraid of um you disowning them or not being a part of the family anymore so then they live with the secret that eats them up inside and it 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 doesn't lead to a happy successful person when you can't live your truth or they won't come home mhm that when they get to the age where they can go be themselves, they'll pretend to be who you want them to be and they'll maybe visit once a year, mm-hmm. but they won't bring their whole life home. Mm-hmm. And if that's what, you know, a lot of parents are okay with because they can't get comfortable with who their their child really is, mm-hmm. that's sort of a shame because, mm-hmm. you know, you're missing out. And your child might have so much to offer mm-hmm. and you might learn so much and they're still the same child. Yeah. Who they present as on the outside to other people really is not uh doesn't it make her break you just doesn't make her break them as people and i think that it's not even gender it's like everything it's mm-hmm. everything to what, what sp- job they choose what sport they play yeah. what kind of what are they like kids who love to do theater and you're like oh, we don't do theater mm-hmm. here like we don't not do band in this house mm-hmm. you know, like if you love it go do it yeah you know but all all the ways we respond to to those things, those little things are going to teach them what what they can and cannot do in this in this household. Well, I think a lot of people would just be like, fast forward, my kids like totally straight with like on the football team mm-hmm. looks like no, they'll never, they'll be totally. There's a name for it, size, and they'll be like completely like, you know, um, gender identity, male, short hair. Like it, the minute you see them, you're like, oh, they're straight, that but like mm-hmm. this. It's sometimes not about your kid. It's sometimes about their environment and who, when you are aware of it, you teach them that they can also bring people into their lives that might be different. And I think it transcends from just something um, as far as gender to all the way to my friend uh, likes same sex. My friend is someone who, um, or you might be working with people who are different. And you know what? That's a reality right now, everybody. Mm -hmm. It's a real reality. Well, and the other thing I'm just thinking when we're talking about that is uh, watch how you react to other people's children and other kids and other things because they're watching you and they're watching your judgment and they're watching a thousand all of that. Even if it doesn't have to do with them, they're watching, especially if they have something going on with them, they're analyzing everything. And even if they're totally quote unquote streamlined, Mm. And then they go and meet someone mm-hmm. who you aren't very fond of, and but they know that you'll give your opinion and you'll be like terrible. They're not going to bring you're, you're going to be out of that family. And then let's say they have a child and you have a grandchild who's different. Mm. Like you're just it's by being closed minded and shutting everybody out, you really don't give opportunity to involve more people into your life. Like, and that makes for a very sad, um, solo, boring life. If, I had to say it. Well, if they're not impacting you, I don't really like it, if it's not to your standard. Well, then like your st- standards are changing and whether you like it or not, it's changing. And mm-hmm. I think it's so important. If you learn about it, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. <laughs> if you learn about it, you're just really educating yourself to be more in the world of what is happening to get the younger, the younger people. And we used to call them tomboys. We used to call them girl, like um, they're kind of like femme girl, femme boys, or they're metrosexuals. We used to call them all of these different kind of names, like names that were acceptable. And some people are just tomboys, but other people identify feel better looking like a boy as a girl. And it's and the a, opposite, exactly. But it's okay if we call them mm-hmm. tomboys. It makes mm-hmm. us feel more comfortable. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't necessarily represent what how they feel. But if it makes why is it need to make us more comfortable well, and then you think about you just think about society it's like th- she can be a tomboy yes but he can't walk around with a tutu no oh, oh no he can't oh. you know they mm-hmm. call them all the bad things but we did make a name up for people metro metrosexual mm-hmm. which was like more of a feminine male which we became okay with which like that's okay i feel like that was a man who took care of himself no i think there for one point it was like they're in it was like guys who like did their hair and like cared about what they wore 
but that was a big thing back in the day. You were more feminine when you did that. I guess. I definitely was looking for a metrosexual when I was looking yeah, for Yeah, I man. think it's progressed a lot. But back yeah. then, I remember when it was like metro, it was like, oh, they're metro. They like actually like they, because there was this big, I there's the, I actually get the definition. There was this big idea that boys just didn't care. It was more yeah. whatever. They just didn't groom. Even if you groomed, you were metrosexual. Yeah, because it was so. Thank God, metrosexual came in, and that b- men knew that they could like. Remember, like wearing pink, relating to or denoting men who live in urban and in areas, enjoying shopping, fashion, and similar interests associated with women or gay men. The rising trend of the metrosexual man, which is kind of all men now. Similar, Every man I know, similar interests that are with gay men. That's what a metrosexual is, and. Back then, a gay man was just a man who cared about, like, yeah, because all men are metrosexual now. Mm-hmm. Think about them and their fashion mm-hmm. and their hairstyles. I know it's just really crazy to think that was such a big deal. It if was you were such a metrosexual, a big deal. that was that was and a our label. kids have never heard that word. No, Mm-mm. it's really crazy. And then the earring, what you earring you wore on mm. your ear, meant such a thing. And holy cow! I mean, anyways, it's a really interesting conversation. And our next guest, um, who you're about to listen to, actually lives in Texas and has two children who have, she has personal experience with this topic. And, you know, the um, conversation is just so insightful and helpful, especially coming from a place where maybe it is the most unexpected place um, to be raising two children who identify as not the gender they were born with. Um, Take a listen. And uh, thanks, guys, for um, joining us on these Monday podcasts. If we're not talking about the things that are impacting our kids, really, we're no better than... um, we're putting our head, our sand in the head, and pretending nothing exists. Our sand in the head, I love. That. Our head in the no, sand, no, sand in the head. Keep it, let's keep it like that. <laughs> we're just we're just pretending that that nothing exists. So let's not do that. Let's just let's just go head on and let's let the expert take it away. We are here with um, Mandy Giles, and um, she is the parent of two non-binary young adults, and is passionate about making safe spaces for transgendered youth, both at home and out in the world. Um, Leveraging more than two decades of serving children through educational nonprofits, Mandy founded Parents of Trans Youth as a social impact business to serve parents who affirm and support their gender diverse kids. Uh, Because both of your transgender children are over the age of 18, she is currently one of the few parents of of trans youth in Texas who is willing and able to speak publicly without fear of being targeted by state government agencies. Uh, she's also the host of the Everyday Trans Activism podcast and lives in Houston, Texas with her husband and her three children. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, well, I don't know if the questions, but I, I think off the baseline, I feel like there's so much misinformation um, about the, the topic and fear and um even like to start off like i think there's a lot of people like what exactly does trans mean and also don't why are you talking about this because then they're going to become it or you know all of these conversations about and um what used to be tomboys which was acceptable or sporty girls what you know those things that we use or feminine boys you know what is the fear of that that label or that conversation that used to be okay when when girls wanted to dress like boys and boys were more feminine hmm Okay, that those were a lot of questions. Um, okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. okay, so okay, let's back up a little bit. Um, so let's yeah, start with some definitions. So, so trans. Well, okay. <laughs> so just a couple of basic definitions. So someone's sex assigned at birth is when you're born. The doctor takes a look at you and decides whether male or female will go on your birth certificate because the doctor is doing the assigning. And so that's your sex assigned at birth. So like for me, when I came out, the doctor decided I was female. So that's what's on my birth certificate. Gender or gender identity is a person's internal sense of being male, female, or another gender. And so for me, my very internal sense deep down in my soul is female. And so that is my gender identity. So for cisgender people, which is generally the majority of the population, 
That means that your sex assigned at birth and your gender identity are the same. They align. So for me, I'm cisgender because those two things are the same for me, female and female. For transgender people, their sex assigned at birth does not align with their gender identity. And that's all it means. So if, say, someone's sex assigned at birth was female, but deep down their internal sense of gender was male, then they might call themselves transgender. Um, or maybe they have a gender that is not on the binary, not male or female. Maybe it's somewhere else in the 3D gender universe, um, non-binary, gender fluid, all sorts of other definitions and, and labels. And they might consider themselves to be transgender as well because their gender identity is not the same as their sex assigned at birth. So that's right. what it means. You okay. know, as um, a parent in Canada, we are fortunate to have schools that support um, these conversations because we often say it doesn't really matter what adults think. If the kids are living it, it's relevant. And we can say, no, 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 no I don't, this is ridiculous, but it's happening and they're the ones who are living it and actually identifying. Um, when we see uh, 12, 13, 11, 10, trying on different gender names and roles, you know, identify as they, them. And then they decide, you know, 14, 15, I'm a she now. You know, is that something that that um, teenagers are going to explore because it's, it's a conversation that's happening? And, you know, I just watched my grade seven and eight, who's now in high school, it's sort of a lot of the kids decided they got to choose what their pronouns were. And that was something that they decided to say, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. And mm -hmm. then... I, I'm not going to say they grew out of it because that's a ridiculous statement. But, you know, they they developed again and decided not this is what I want to be. So is that just something that we're looking at as as a new way of living and thinking as as we look at these kids grow up? Well, I think there is a lot more, um, I, I guess I would say openness and flexibility. And I'm for, well, backing up, thank goodness that where you are, kids can be themselves. Um, that is a gift that um, to kids because it's not like that anywhere um, or not, <laughs> everywhere, I should say, especially in Texas where I am. Um, and I, it is, it's a normal part of the human condition to explore and question your gender identity, your sexuality. And I think and it's more accepted now. And more people are doing it out in the open. Like you said, like people are uh, choosing their pronouns or saying, mom, this is who I am, or call me this, call me this. Whereas like for someone my age, we didn't talk about that stuff at all. I mean, nothing, not in school, not in family, nothing. We didn't even have the words, really. But the, the word mm -hmm. transgender is a, it's a pretty new-ish word. And so now that it's in the vernacular, um, Kids are more exposed to what it means to be gender diverse and can put a name to what they're feeling, then they might kind of try on different gender identities. And that's not to say that it's um, not real, but they're just exploring. And so they might think, you know what, this right now, this is what fits for me. Like being calling myself non binary really fits for me. And then maybe. Three years down the road, they might think, you know, maybe that's not what fits for me. And that's OK. Um, and I think our job as parents is to accept the present as mm. the the current reality. And that can be hard as a parent because a lot of times you don't think gender is something that's going to change. And so that is what can be hard for for moms and dads and caregivers to think, well, wait a minute, that's not supposed to change. So you must be confused or making it up, or maybe it's a fad, or maybe you found it on the internet, or you read a book with a transgender character. Now you decided you're a transgender. But that's not the way it works. Uh, it, it's like I said, gender identity is deep inside. And maybe they try it on and think, you know, maybe that that's actually not who I am. And that's okay. Um, yeah. You know, the world's not yeah, going to fall apart just because um, a child decided to use they them pronouns. It makes so much sense when 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 I'm just thinking about how now they can do it out in public. It's like that is um, like during those years, it's so experimental trying to find yourself. And now it's just that they are able to talk to their peers, maybe talk to their parents about it. It's just another one of those exploratory times in their lives. Um, 
How old were, as from a parent's perspective, um, and you have the experience because um, you have two uh, transgendered children, is this a conversation that if as a parent you're seeing something that you want to start the conversation, how did it happen for you? Did you bring it up to them or did they bring it up to you? And how did you feel when it happened? How did they say it? And all of that. Yeah, sure. Um, well, it's different for, for everybody. And some parents do see the signs, especially if they're younger, like um, gender development or the, 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 ident- the development of gender identity can start really um, at about three years old. That's when kids learn or, or can figure out like, oh, I am a boy, I am a girl, or I am neither. Uh, and so sometimes kids can really start articulating also about what their gender identity is. And so so some parents can see like if a child is saying like, why do you keep calling me a boy? I am not a boy. Or why am I keep, why does the teacher keep putting me in the boy's line? I should be in the girl's line. And, and so so some parents can see those signs. And then some parents do not. And it all depends on the kid. Like I did not. And maybe I should have. I don't know. And uh, sometimes uh, parents can kind of beat themselves up about that. Like, oh, I should have known. I sh- if I had only known, I could could have given my kids some support or whatever. And and it's hard not to beat yourself up about that. But it just you just kind of have to, you know, roll with it. And just like any other thing in parenting, like we well, make mm. mistakes, y'all. I mean, and if you be- beat yourself up over every mistake, you would never make it through the day. Yeah. But so for me, um, my the first child to come out uh, as non-binary, uh, they came out, let's see, in ninth grade as a freshman in high school. And I remember it so well. I was washing dishes, you know, had the mom gloves on and everything. And they came up to me and they're like, mom, um, I need you to buy me a binder. And I was like, oh, okay. So it's like eight o'clock at night. Um, I wonder if Office Max is open. Um, do you need like a three, re- like a for a binder, you know, how big? They're like, no, 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 mom. I need a chest binder. It's like, oh, okay. So not office supplies. Uh-huh. Um, okay, wait, what does that mean? And so that that was their way of coming out to me. And so I I had never met a transgender person before my kid came out to me that I knew of. And so my kid had to explain what non-binary men and what transgender meant and what a chest binder was, which, by the way, it's like basically a very tight tank top to um, um, minimize the appearance of of a female um, chest. And so that was my first experience. When that then, thing came, yeah. was that that child was just already had obviously gone through so much of the process internally or either with friends or or maybe all alone online mm-hmm. and then when they came to you they were sure yes definitely and i a lot of times i explain that phenomenon like your kid is the conductor of the train and by the time they come to you the train has left the station <laughs> and so and and this is the way with a lot of things with our kids right and so Kind of as parents, we're always going to be running alongside the train, trying to keep up because they're always going to be a little bit ahead of us. But you have to keep running alongside the train. And then the metaphor can go on like, don't take your baggage with you. Leave your baggage at the station. Your kid is the conductor. You are not the conductor. Um, But really, most I would say most of the time and I'm not transgender. And so I can't speak for transgender people or kids. But what people have told me, what kids have told me is By the time they come to you, they've been thinking about it for a while. And it's very common for tweens, teens, young adults to come out to friend groups first Mm -hmm. because that's a sure thing. That's the affirmation. So, yeah, exactly. And it's almost, um, I was going to say, like flattering in a way that the kid might come out to you kind of last or or last down the line because you're the most important. Mm -hmm. And so they want to get the sure thing. They want to get the affirmation. A lot of times people start using a different name at school and think, okay, I'm going to try this out. Okay, this feels good. This this is what I need. Okay, now I'm going to tell mom and dad because they're the ones that really matter the most. And I know that this is who I am. And and now I can approach them. And because 
like even my kid, they, the first child had already come out to us as um, bisexual and and knew that we were affirming about different sexualities. And um, and when my child came out to me, they were still afraid we would kick them out. Mm hmm. And we are not those kinds so, of parents. So, so, so knowing after already coming out as bisexual, uh -huh. was afraid of being kicked out for uh, revealing that they were transgendered. Yes. Wow. Because so many kids are. And mm -hmm. the, oh, I don't, I can't quote the statistics, but a huge number of homeless youth are LGBTQ because of their parents maybe not understanding because it's a difference of faith or whatever it is. And so they just say, I can't deal with this. You cannot be in my house if uh, if you're not going to live by my rules. This is wrong. If you're going to live like that, you need to get out. And so so kids hear these stories, which are real, or they see it online or they hear the statistics. So they hear about hard times that their friends have and they're terrified to tell their parents because that might happen to them. No matter how open and accepting and loving their parents might be, there's always that fear. And so I think that's one reason why kids might wait to tell their parents and they might get that that safe space, that that sure thing of affirmation, whether it's with their friend group or online. Um, and online, it always like, oh, they're being turned trans because they're online. And it's not that, it's they're finding their people online where they oh. may not find their people in person. And so that's okay to have that kind of safe space online too. And I think for every parent who is so um, like, this is, there's no way, like it's choice. You know, I, I hear that a lot. And I think that if you have someone in your life who's gone through it or went through it, it's, uh, they would never choose. No one wants to choose a hard path. So if you're thinking it's a choice with the, with the walking out every day, knowing you might not be safe or, you know, going into a workplace where you may not um, be accepted or you might be fired or you might be killed, you might be beat up, literally. Um, I think that a par if everyone could just remember that if you're so afraid you're not going to fit in, you wish you could be the quote unquote traditional path. And I think everyone forgets that and people take their lives because they don't even want to deal with the fact that they might be different than everybody else and then the struggle and the hardness they have. So if you have a a huge issue with it, it's better to learn about it than just pretend it doesn't exist. Because, you know, I don't know on the spectrum um, where people feel comfort. Because I, I personally have someone in my life who, you know, uh, <laughs> identifies as a female, looks like a male for like all purposes, and would identify as queer. And I know from the age of three, kind of was like, and also changed their name and was like, I am not wearing those clothes. I am not putting a dress on. Like from the age of three would scream and cry, you know, without, and I'm talking like 35 years ago. And then wear um, bathing suits that were not female bathing suits. And it was a very, it was interesting to watch the struggle between traditional roles. And because, you know, 35 years ago, there was no names. Is there like an umbrella where, or a name? I don't know if it's queer. I'm not sure where people maybe transgender is too much of a label for some people, right? Like, they, is there something that we can understand as a parent when our kid is going through so many different avenues? Because I think a big part is, is very overwhelming, the labels, the names, and then where the, we all want them to fit somewhere, right? Like, are they transgender? Are they gay? Are they queer? Are they bi? <laughs> are they what? It's, it's so many words. So sure. how can we help our youth how can we understand them or meet them or, you know, explore that we're open and they might not even know. Like, what are the what's what what can we do here? Yeah, that the vocabulary is a huge thing. And that's a big part of what I do when educating parents that because uh, like I said, I didn't know any of this vocabulary. Like, what is non-binary? What is pansexual? What is arrow ace? Mm -hmm. And it can be very confusing. And I think depending <laughs> on your age and not and and your familiarity with these concepts uh, like at first my husband and I really tried to figure out our kids and their relationships or maybe their friends relationships like a puzzle like okay wait so if you're if, if he was first a 
girl, but now is a boy, but then is dating a boy. So does that mean that that he's gay or what? Or what and it's like people are are not puzzles. It's just they are who they are, and so whatever labels they choose to use or not use, then we just believe people when they tell us who they are, mm. and it's not our job to to put those labels on them um and i i think we can still educate ourselves and i think that's a huge part of being not only just excuse me uh, a parent in general but uh, a parent of a transgender non-binary gender diverse kid to educate ourselves on the concepts and the vocabulary so that we can have a conversation on the same page with our kids. Um, and I think the, the well, in terms of the the vocabulary, a lot of um, people may not want to consider themselves transgender. Like I know say, non-binary people who say, you know what, transgender is not a word for me. I'm just going to use the word non-binary for myself. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. I don't. Maybe don't understand it, but that's okay. And I'll just accept that. Or some people say, you know what? I don't like those words at all. They just don't fit for me. I'm going to call myself queer. And queer tends to be more of an umbrella term. Uh, and it has, if you remember, it was used as a slur, um, you know, maybe not even that long ago, but has been reclaimed by the LGBTQ community mm-hmm. in recent times. And so, and it's usually used kind of as an umbrella term, but some people use that for themselves. Like they'll say, I'm a queer man, I'm a queer woman. But like I, as a straight cisgender person, would never call a person queer. Right. Yes. Um, so, but a but lot of people they, use but that. But you could say, umbrella. um, like it, queer is just someone who does not identify with traditional, um, stereotypical roles in the heterosexual world. So, if they ask, what are you can say, oh, my brother's queer or my can si- you? my siblings queer. Can you refer to them like that or no? If they re- if they call themselves queer, if they call themselves queer, okay, I think okay. that's where the key, the key is, like because then you're not doing the labeling. Yeah. Um, so and you might even ask them, I um, maybe, you know, not in front of a bunch of people, but if it's someone that's close to you, like, I'm curious, like, how how do you identify? How, what what do those words mean to you? Because non-binary, transgender, queer, whatever, means something different to every person because Mm. everybody is unique. And I mean, there are infinite number of genders in a way because there's an infinite number of people. Well, not infinite, but, you know, Mm. that as many people as there are, that's how many definitions of gender and sexuality because we all experience that in our own way. And and isn't it true that um, it doesn't matter what you want them to be. It, mm-hmm. it they are who they are, and that isn't your business. It, well, they'll they'll let you know. Well, on that note, yep. Mandy, uh, I know that um, there's going to be people that are listening to this that are um, your children were very lucky to have you as uh, their parents, but there's a lot of parents who are really struggling not only with having. Um, uh, let's say a transgender or non-binary um, child um, and also how to explain it to the rest of the world to aunts and uncles and grandma and grandpa and like that's it, it will end up people will come to the parents and ask questions first of all how do you, what do you say to parents who are struggling with just trying to accept this and be okay with it and then sharing with the world what's going on with their child when they ask oh those are two big questions um I think for a parent that is struggling, knowing that you don't have to understand it all to be supportive Mm -hmm. is really helpful to know because it can feel like your world is exploding. I mean, especially if if all of that is new to you and you may think like there I didn't know there were more than two genders. And what is this? And I don't understand. I mean, your world, like the paradigm of how you have organized your world Mm -hmm. is crumbling. And that is terrifying that that even just that part can be can have a lot of fear based in that. And so just kind of taking a moment to breathe and give yourself some space and grace to not have to figure it out all at once. And just be as supportive of your kid as you can can be helpful. 
and knowing and just believing your child. Like we were talking about at the beginning that they know who they are and they've been thinking about this for a long time. And that can be a big leap because I think in many societies, it's the parents who are like, we know what's best for you and the kid, you know, they don't, they can't make decisions on their own. But if you are thinking about your child knowing who they are, then that can help you along in your your way. And then in terms of telling other people, that is a big concern. A lot of times that's the first thing that a parent's mind leaps to. Like, what am I going to tell people? Like, what am I going to tell your grandparents? What am I going to tell your siblings? And what do we do at school? And what do I tell the neighbors? First of all, it's not your story to tell. It's the child's story. So especially when you're dealing with preteens, teens, young adults, you can ask them and say, hey, is uh, what would you like me to say to Nana and Papa? What would you, how would you like me to tell your siblings? Or how do you want to handle this? Do you want to tell anybody? And the kid might say, no, I don't want to tell anybody right now. And that's hard because then you might be toggling with names and pronouns and it can be like mm. mental gymnastics in your head when you go to Thanksgiving and everybody's calling your kid their old name and in your mind, you're like, but it's a new name. Uh, yeah. it, it, it can be a little difficult. But 30 years when, later, we still have that issue. Just see, it's, it, 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 is a, it, is a trans, it is a hard thing, you yeah. know, to, to do. It's a hard thing to do even when you've lived with it for that. Like it is, you know, you still hear people do it. And you're like, oh God, no, it's not the name. Yeah, for sure. It can, and it just, it takes practice and you have to try and just really work at it. Um, and I think that's another thing too, that parents might think like, oh, you know, I, I just, it's so hard to use they, them for yeah. a singular person. And yeah, it's hard, but you got to do it. And because that's the way that you show love and respect to mm -hmm. your kid. And that's what I had to, I had to tell my mom that, um, Thankfully, my parents were really great at getting the new names of both of my kids pretty quickly, but they still just really have trouble with the they, them. And it's, you know, they're 78 years old. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some time. And and I have asked my kids, do you want me to correct Kaki and Pappy when we go over? Because, you know, they're going to call you by, you know, your old pronouns. They're going to keep misgendering you. And most of the time they're like, you know, what? don't worry about it. But I keep when I'm on the phone with my parents, I'll say, you know, you know, Indigo uses they, them. And my mom will say, oh, it's so hard. Like, yeah, I know it's hard. And you need to use that because that's the way you show Indigo that you love them. Mm -hmm. She was like, oh. And the very next conversation I had with my mom, she did it. And she was like, see, I did it. Like, yes, mom. Yes, you did it. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Yes. That's really um, lovely. Yeah. And so it's really about communication with your kid. And if your child says, yes, I want to be known as whatever their new name is, Kai, um, so you need to start talking about me like that with, with your friends or, or whoever, then what I recommend to parents that I work with is to come up with one sentence and like say if someone says, oh, how's so-and-so and using their old name? You say, oh, you know, so-and-so is now um, indigo and um, uses they, them pronouns. Have like an like an elevator pit, not like just like exactly. something to go. So you're not like, yeah. Oh, anyways, this and now we are like, so you're not stumbling. Yeah, and I would say I actually yes. Like, in in our lives, we've had um, parents do that. Yeah, and you just you're like, carry on. Yeah, like, yeah. You're so used yeah, to it, where we live. Yeah, yeah. And then in Texas, it's not so much. And then you can decide whether you know if it's you know you're talking to the barista or whatever, like you don't need to go into a whole long explanation of your kid's okay. gender identity. Okay. But if it's someone like you can decide if you're uh, um, running into someone that you're going to see again and you feel like answering questions, then you can. But you are never obligated to explain your kid to anyone. And and I think that's it more so for transgender people that a transgender person is never obligated to explain themselves or their gender identity to anyone. And they are never obligated to make somebody else more comfortable about their existence because that's everybody else's work is becoming comfortable. I, I, I know it's 1130. We've kept you and you've been amazing. And I, I just, you know, I want to, I want to ask one last question. I, I don't have the questions, but I just, if you're a parent and, and you're really struggling, um, 
you just can't accept that this is the way it's going to be. And you, you just are like, I can't do this. And you keep just referring like, this is crazy. This is a choice like this. You know, you just are, are not OK with it. <laughs> what happens? Like, yeah, the, right. what? so parents know, like, what are the harms of not accepting your child mm-hmm. who they are? Yeah. What 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 do they need mm-hmm. to know just so they they know? Sure. That's a great question. Um, the statistics in the United States are that only one in three kids who are non-binary or transgender have their gender identities affirmed at home. And that's distressing because the rates of depression and anxiety of transgender kids are so much more, like up to three times higher than the general youth population. And the suicidal ideations and the suicide attempts are twice as high as the general youth population. And that comes from, it, it, it's not that transgender kids are inherently more Mm-mm. depressed or whatever. It's not because of who they are. It's because of how they are treated. And it's because they are not accepted in their home. And it's because they're not accepted out in the world. And that can be from discrimination, bias, when, uh, you know, institutional prejudice like laws and policies or when politicians are very uh, vocal about their transphobic views, homophobic views, whatever, or when their parents cannot see them for who they are. When your parent is saying, that's not you, you don't know who you are, you're just you'll grow out of this. Yes, that that can really cut to your core to have your parent not see you or believe you. And so so the, it is crucial to the mental health of your child. To the, It is life-saving mm-hmm. to support your child. So if you think you can't do it on your own and you are lost and yet you know, okay, I got to do something, then... Find support. There are support groups out there. Um, there are four parents who are going through this to meet other parents who have gone through the same thing as you. Uh, whether that's uh, sometimes therapy is really a great way to work through your own crap before you can get to uh, working with your kid or you know, working with someone like me who has been through it before and have that peer support and to help get you through the head and heart part of parenting your transgender kid. And one last thing, um, you know, uh, just uh, we have seven kids between us. They are not they're still young. Um, Right now, we don't have anyone um, who is gender diverse living in the house that we know of. But when we're raising our children and we're speaking to our friends and our partners, what are a few things that um, we can do within our families and also suggest to other parents and classes and schools to be allies for for all of these people going through that? Uh, yes, I would say one of the big things is normalizing gender diversity. Uh, like I was saying, when you introduce your kid and um, or if you're talking about somebody else, then, uh, you know, somebody else's kid, then you might say, oh, yeah, the other transgender. OK, so, um, hey, let's go get a drink from the bar or whatever. And just not. Like, oh, my gosh. Did you know right. Transgender? Um, and so that will go a long way and respecting people's names and pronouns, um, calling out any kind of misinformation, any jokes, um, any slurs sort of when you see something, say something. And it can sometimes be more helpful to call people in than calling people out. And that might be, you know, someone does something online rather than like blasting them in a public forum and then they get all defensive. Then you might send them a message or whatever. Or if it's in person, you pull them to the side and be like, hey, you know, that that joke that you told or the that word that you used is really super offensive to the transgender community um, because it perpetuates this myth of X, Y, Z. So please don't use that word anymore um, or just, you know, don't use that word around me, please. Um, and I think just those little bits of education, like you don't need to be on the steps of your you know, state capital, your province capital um, with a megaphone, but you can uh, just really trying to educate um, your friends and family can really go a long way. Mm-hmm. And I think on that point, you know, um, there was like a group chat and someone called someone we know by their old name. Mm-hmm. And I call I was like, hey, just, so you know, I think the person prefers this name. Um, 
kind of like, LOL, it's been it's been a long time. And then they were like, I'm so sorry, you're right. And then recorrected. So I think sometimes it's just, and everyone was on the chat, but I think it's just helpful for us to re- always remember that we can do little things to help that person feel like seen and supported and, you know, like they belong. Um, so they're not always fighting on their own. So if it is a sibling, exactly. you know, if it is um, a cousin, if it's someone you can help out with, then it's so helpful to them. So they're not always going to have to do it by themselves. Exactly. And that's the role of allies to stand in the gap between the LGBTQ community, the trans community and the people who either wish to harm them or are learning more. And so it's not always on the shoulders Um, Mm -hmm. because like our kids, our kids are not Google um, as much as we want them to be. And so doing that education on your own or helping to educate other people can really go a long way. So because it's exhausting to Mm -hmm. constantly being defending your identity and educating other people. And so if we can take some of that burden off of our kids, off of our trans friends, then that can go a long way in being allies. And you don't have to be an expert in the area in order yeah. to be one. I think that's the other thing as well. I don't know. And it just, you know, if you know that if you can see the person for the person and know what they want, that can be enough. Sometimes it doesn't have to be a whole essay for everyone. Yeah. Either if you're a parent listening right now or you're anybody who wants to do better and be an ally or find out more information about what they're going through or what you've gone through, um, where can they find out more from you? Sure. Uh, For parents who are looking for more support, you can go to my website, parentsoftransyouth.com slash support. And on that page, you can find how you can work with me and learn more. Uh, There's an online course there that's just a very introductory course of like all the vocabulary that we talked about and Mm. and the head and heart part um, that can be really helpful for parents at the beginning of their journey or working with me one on one, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Instagram, I'm really active. So at Parents of Trans Youth. And uh, that is a really good way to learn more. I do a lot of advocacy as well as working with parents of trans kids. So I uh, am always giving speeches in different places and telling the Texas government, you know, stick it where the sun don't shine. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it's I'm always hoping to inspire others. Well, thank you so much for everything that you do. So many people um, so are so thankful for for you speaking out, especially where you live. Thank you.